It's getting towards the end of the semester, so students are working on their research projects. And we're all about wildlife surveys in my group. So we've been deploying something like $14,000 worth of monitoring equipment in the forest. We've got one group that's been working on camera trapping in the forests behind the Centre for Amazon Studies. And already the cameras have picked up Jagurundi and Ocelot just meters from where the students are sleeping every night. We had some really exciting footage of squirrel monkeys and tamarind monkeys together, even in the same frame. We saw ocelot three times. Mm -hmm. We've seen a couple of paca, mm -hmm. a couple of gooey. Tamandua. What we've been noticing here are a lot of rodents and marsupials, including four-eyed possums, um, rice, rice. Rice rats. Rice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and some agoutis here and there. And so what we're also finding are smaller big cats in the area such as ocelots and jagarundis and so we think there's a correlation between the two that because we're finding these smaller uh, rodents and marsupials we're also finding these bigger cats which are eating those uh, small mammals. Another group of students has been using the camera traps in the mineral licks here in Sukasari. So this is a super active part of the culpa. We see here that there's deer, peccary, and tapir footprints, so we know it's used by large mammals. Mineral licks are really important because it's where animals come to get essential nutrients part of their diet. We want to know if the animals are spending less time in culpas close to Sukasari than they are further away where they're hunted a little bit less and it looks like they're finding something. The sample size is kind of low, but the deer that are further away from Sukasari are spending longer drinking the water and eating the earth in the mineral licks up there. The third study is on birds. We had two birders come, and I'm really excited about that because it meant we could use the audio recorder to look at white sand forest birds. So we have these cool remote audio recorders here. You can see the little microphones, and we set them up in trees, and basically we just leave them there and they record every morning from 5.30 to 9.30. And we're hoping to record white sand specialist birds like the Akito's gnatcatcher, which is very special worldwide because it's quite possibly one of the rarest birds in the entire world with only like 10 breeding pairs. Woodpecker. So Percy here is our expert. He knows all of the bird sounds. Literally all of them. It's amazing. Incredible. I don't know how he does it. He knows all the scientific names. Yeah. We're out here, we barely hear anything, and he just comes over, he's like, boom, 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 boom. And we're like, hey, do your thing, man. Thanks, Percy. You're welcome. So they're using software that automatically looks through all the recordings and picks out calls that sound the same. And then they've been working with Percy to identify those calls and look for those special birds. White sand forests are under threat from the harvest of sand, and these forests do not grow back quickly. The soil is so poor in nutrients that trees take hundreds of years just to get 10 centimeters across. This habitat's under threat, and these birds are even more under threat. We're just like the A-team, only with bird stuff.